Hello, hello, hello. It is another beautiful Sunday, even though it is not shiny outside and it is cold. It is still a beautiful day because we are alive. But anyways, I am giving my this week's sermon on Sunday again, like I did last week, other than on Monday, because I have a really busy week coming up this week with the uh, homeless outreach that I'm doing to feed some people. But uh, I had... Um, Yesterday, read out my next two sermons because the Lord had given me something and I felt a fire back on me that I thought was gone, but it really wasn't because, you know, the Lord doesn't speak to us all the time because he's in the midst of working things and he was in the midst of working some things with me. And finally, I had had a vision of words. Um, basically, I have a third sermon that I haven't wrote out yet, though, but he gave me a vision of mad and I had used things like fear, where I put false evidence appearing real, and uh, Bible basic instructions before leaving earth, and crack the uh, uh, community rage against Christian kindness. I haven't had any words like that for a while, so when he gave me mad, I'll let you guys know what that says when I get to that point. I'm not going to get to it, but he started to talk to me. So this one I'm given today, I am calling 2020 the year. Um that's really all we can say. 2020, the year, we can pretty much wrap this up right here and not do anything anymore and just call it a quits because you can just put that in a nutshell in a bubble right there. The 2020, the year. I mean, it has been a year. It has been a heck of a year, or you can even say hell of a year. Not a cuss word, but it has been. I mean, really. So anyways, you know, 2020, if you want to get to talking about it, this could go on forever. It really could. Um, this year, seriously though, I mean, I'm only 32, but this year in particular has been just uh, smashing your hopes, dreams, everything. Um, there has not been a thing. It's almost been like a smorgasbord of things that could happen in 2020. There has not been anything that hasn't happened almost. I mean, literally almost everything that could happen except the good Lord and Savior of itself comes down now and ends it all. It's about the only thing we're missing from this year. You know, this year really starts with the virus. That's the biggest thing about this uh, this whole year is this virus, COVID, or Christ over various infectious diseases. Um, the word corona actually means crown. And I'm not going to go into further like some people saying that this is the Antichrist, this is the mark of the beast, coronavirus, all that. No, I'm going to go into... That this coronavirus, COVID-19, corona does mean crown, but think about it. While we were all locked up at home together, this was really a time to find the Lord. And a lot of us didn't find the Lord. And, you know, because the Bible is a book of metaphors and we don't look at a lot of things in life as metaphors. We look at them as it's happening. But we need to look at some of the things in life as metaphors compared to the metaphors in the Bible and realize that it is talking to us that this corona thing could have been just the whole thing of come back to Lord, come back to God. But anyways, this virus has changed our humanity. It really has. Our humanity as we know it has been destroyed. There is nothing that looks even resemblance of a familiar, uh, like a familiar lifestyle that we used to have. There's nothing like that. Even when you turn on your sports games, you got these people with virtual crowds and you'll see ones in a crowd going, because their faces are freezing. Like, guys, this ain't sports, man. It's not sports. But enough about that because sports ain't of the Lord. I'm just speaking for instance. But we, but you know, how it's changed humanity. We fear instead of remembering that the Lord, our God has our back. And, and we, this COVID, you know, Christ over various infectious diseases, we forget that he has our back. But in Joshua chapter 1, verse 9, have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I know it's not talking about diseases there, but wherever we go, this COVID-19 thing is here. So it's reminding us with this verse that no matter what you do, where you go, where you're at in life, whether you're an atheist, whether you're a Christian, the Lord is with you. He may not be talking to you if you're an atheist, but he's with you because he created you. He may not be talking to you when you're Christian because maybe you're not remembering he's there. But, you know, we fear this as I'm out going to the homeless 
and I'm doing my street ministry, I'm not wearing a mask, and I'm coming in contact with people that are homeless that they are saying are the biggest ones. Remember the beginning of COVID-19, they said, these are the ones you're going to catch it from. I have not caught COVID one time, knock on wood, as far as I know, because I refuse to go get tested or go to a doctor's office, but I haven't been sick at all this year because I've left everything to the Lord. And I know that when I'm coming and praying for someone, the Lord ain't going to give me COVID-19 while I'm praying for somebody, unless you think in your heart it's going to happen. And if you think in your heart it's going to happen, you're going to get it. But if you're going out of the face of the Lord to pray for somebody, he's not going to strike you with this disease because this disease is out of his hands. It is a man-made creator disease, but everything that is man-made is also of God because he created man. So nevertheless, if he wouldn't have created man, we never would have had this virus anyway. So it can be of God. But you know, our Lord and Savior can heal anything. He could heal COVID. He could take this whole COVID thing away, which I believe, I'm not going to get political, but I believe after election, regardless of who wins, it's going to go away anyways. We're not going to see it anymore. And if that happens, then um, I, I, it happens. I, I, I'm not going to say give me credit or anything because I'm not no prophet or anything. I don't need credit. I don't want credit. The only credit I want is from our Lord and Savior, which is what 2020 needs. 2020 has not had enough of it. 2020 has been a year that has desperately failed us. This year has, um, I've talked about it enough, really. But anyways, this virus has, um, this virus has us being happy when certain people get it. And, uh, you know, bringing that up, why? Because recently when the President of the United States got it, whether you support him or not, when he got it, look at some of the nasty tweets people gave. People were so excited that our president of the United States caught a virus, but if they would have caught it, they wouldn't have been excited, but they were excited this man caught it. You know, this man is a husband and a father, so whether you like him as a president or not, you're wishing death upon him when he had it, and not realizing it may have brought joy to you if he wouldn't have made it, but think about his wife and kids, what it would have done to them. But that's the problem. None of you use this, including me. We're stupid. We are. We're stupid. I'm going to put it that way because no one will put it that way to you guys. You're stupid. Has that sunk in yet? I hope it has because you are. And I wish I was standing in front of a group of people because I would tell you this to your face because I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. I'm not going to be that person to preach you a word to make you feel like I'm going to pat you on your back like Chuck Pagano used to do every time the Colts did a mistaking play, like that bonehead play they did. He clapped to him. I'm not going to clap to you. I'm not. I'm not going to cower to your listeners, your viewers, my viewers. I don't even care if you unfollow me. I'm not going to care what you think of me because I'm going to speak the truth to you. If you're going to denounce anything I say to you, and I tell you that the Lord gave it to me, then denounce him. Don't denounce me because you ain't going to do nothing but hurt him. You ain't hurting me. The only one that can hurt me physically on this earth is my family, and my family will always back me. None of you in this world can hurt me. And that's a problem with 2020. You worry about what somebody tweeted or, or told you on Facebook when they're about 3,000 miles away from you and you don't wake up every day to them. Forget about that person. And instead, pray that I'm sorry that I had this feeling towards this person and don't care about what a single soul in 2020 thinks about you. Think about what the Lord thinks about you. That's what you need to be thinking in this year. That's what I've been learning to do. And the more and more I do this, yeah, I'm preaching, you know, in times. No one wants to hear it. You know, I don't care if no one wants to hear it. I was told no one wants to hear it. I was told that I would become unpopular for those two roads that they're given, and I'm trying to take the road of unpopularity. I do not care if you like what I'm talking about. I'm going to be as blunt because if anyone knows me, I'm a blunt person. I'm straight to the point, and I'm straight to the point of I will get in your face in person. If you know me, you know I'm right. I will get directly in your face regardless of COVID-19 or not, and I will say whatever I want. End of story. But I'm not like coming to, you know, if this offends you, the words I'm saying from the Bible, then you need to check your soul. You need to check your soul. Don't be telling me to check my soul. You need to check your soul is what you need to do. But you know, um, also people were glad 
when when that had happened with our president back to that. They were also glad when this Ruth lady that was in the uh, that was in our government not too long ago died. People were happy she died. I didn't stand for the things she did with the abortions and all that, but I wasn't happy that a person died because this was somebody's grandmother and all that. But this is some of the things I'm talking about that takes me to Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, uh, verse 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law so basically are any of these things that i said in relations to galatians when our president of the united states got covid19 and if you were one of them that was happy you got it did you practice any of this stuff from galatians about love peace joy any of it no you didn't i'm going to give you a chance to answer it because if you're going to answer yes you did have joy even though you were grateful he got it or you were grateful that ruth died even though that she aborted babies when god's taking care of that it's not our job god's taking care of that if if you were happy when this happened then you weren't practicing galatians 5 so don't be a fool and say oh yeah i love them no, you don't you're an idiot you're a fool we all are i'm an idiot I'm a fool. If you wake up in the morning and don't think you are, that's the problem. That's why in 2020, we feel so self-entitled to everything. Oh, this virus has hurt me more than it's hurt that family. How do you know that? Are you in their home or are they in your home? And are they talking about their finances with you or their finances or what their kids do or this and that? No, quit thinking you have it worse than anybody else. We're in this together in 2020. And that is the biggest problem. We act so divided. This country is not ready. I'm getting off what I even wrote for this. This country ain't even ready. If Jesus came down now in a country where we don't even have a set religion, if you go to China, they know what their number one religion is. If you go to Egypt, they know what their number one religion is. If you come here to America, they tell you, oh yeah, look in that cauldron that we're stewing that turned all these miscuous colors and the stuff. We're just stirring this pot. That's the cauldron of crap. That's what we call it. Every religion in the world is combined into one here in America. It's the religion of crap. Because this nation, we're not ready. We're not. This year should have brought people together, but all it did was cause fear. The false evidence appearing real, like I said. This year has been a year of fires, too. Lots of fires. Lots of land could uh, could make you think of the uh, of what the Bible says about that, about fires and land. In Revelations chapter 8, verse 7, Then the first angel sounded his trumpet, and there came hell and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled down on the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and a third of the green grass was burned up. Guys, from Australia to the United States, from Greek to Russia, the world has been burning since the start of this year. <laughs> and it hasn't stopped. We're now into the 10th month of 2020 and there hasn't been one month one day in this year that somewhere in the world has not been on fire but we don't see it in america since the uh australia fire went out because california fire started and then we started neglecting listening to the rest of the world but russia has also been on fire the siberian forest that is you know a big Iceland basically is on fire. Uh, Greek has been on fire. A lot of that was to do with a volcano though, but <laughs> these things are all said. So a fire that has moved people to different lands reminds me like, you know, people are moving from California and Colorado to evacuate from these fires. It reminds me a lot, uh, a lot of the time when uh, Lot escaped Sodom and Gomorrah when it was destroyed in Genesis, when the two angels came to him. You know, in the nick of time, they made him leave a town that was burning. I'm not saying it's the same, you know, even though we kind of are at Sodom and Gomorrah with the nasty things we do in this country. But, you know, all these people are like, can be referred to as like Lot. They're leaving a fired place. This year has also brought a revival of faith, though. Nevertheless, through all this darkness, has brought a revival of faith amongst some of the people. You see all over YouTube or in churches, people being brought back to the Lord. Like in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, where it talks of the day of the Lord, it says, And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Then, where I'm going with this, 
you see on YouTube this this Sean guy. I'm not going to pronounce his last name because I'm terrible with him. But um, I'm pretty sure you know what I'm talking about. He's got long blonde hair. This Sean guy has been taking his worship from one end of America to the other during these trying times. During these times, nobody wants to hear it. But this is some of what I'm talking about, the revival of faith that we've been seeing in America, not just from young people like me talking in church of what's happened and going out and feeding people. This guy's actually been going from town to town doing this. And uh, the Lord has been paving the way for him. And he's going to pave the way for more people like me and like you that are listening that want to do this stuff. He's going to pave the way for us, but we got to stay obedient. We have to. And it'll be on his timing, first and foremost. But then... To bring, uh, to bring revival and worship for our Lord is what he's doing with this music across. Um, to have these revivals and to come and to worship him, we draw near to him when we do these things. Like in James chapter 4, verse 8, come near to God and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We are double-minded, <laughs> but uh, we're seeing this happen with, with this, and we also have seen people be ridiculed for being Christians. There is a story not too long ago of a couple younger guys in Pakistan that were spreading the word of God, and they were executed. They were beheaded for preaching the word of God, and because they refused to denounce the Lord in front of them. This was in Pakistan. But the news only shows you other things. They show you the things going on here. They don't show you the Christians actually being ridiculed for this. You have to look them up. But it's been happening a lot, even in America. These Christians are being killed, like the Bible says, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. In fact, everyone who lives, or in fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. These people in China are doing the same thing. These are our brothers and sisters in Christ, whether you realize it or not. They are our brothers and sisters. We have to watch. See, we've also watched in 2020 the churches go from, from being there to not being there. From lukewarm to cold. From hot and on fire to no longer here at all. Bankruptcy or misused. That's how we're seeing the churches in 2020. I'm not saying this wouldn't happen before, but it's even happening bigger. You can basically read Revelations chapter 2 to chapter 3. I ain't even going to repeat a thing out of there. But that's about the seven churches. Our churches are scared. They're not here. And to me, we're the churches that are the whole, every church. I'm not trying to put them down, even my own church, but we're all cold. And, and maybe not necessarily every church's fault, COVID-19. And it's made people not want to come back to God because their lives have became so... Um, stuck up at home, up each other's butts, that they have forgotten about the interaction of human beings. But in Hebrew, the Hebrew calendar, in case you don't know that, 2020 stood for the year of mouth. The year of mouth. That's what in Hebrew, their calendar, 2020 stood for year of mouth. And this has been a year of righteous things being said out of mouth and bad, evil, killing words being said out of mouth. In Proverbs 15, verse 4, it is for both that I, I, it doesn't say this, but this is both for the righteous and for the bad things being said out the mouth. It says, a gentle tongue is a tree of life, but perversionness in it breaks the spirit. And that's what we're seeing in 2020, when it's the year of the mouth. Um, this year, we have lots to say. More good than or more bad than good, mainly in this year. But um, we're in a day of rebellion, is what we're in. Uh, seriously, open your eyes. We're, we're in a day of rebellion. We have to put these masks on our mouths, but not literally. But we're putting these masks on. We should mask our voice on certain things. As the days draw near and we drive further away from the Lord, we should mask our voices on certain things. But we shouldn't mask them when it comes to prophesizing. I don't even care if you go out in the streets and somebody tells you, you Jesus freak or whatever they want to call you. Then just bring up more and more verses to pee them off. I'm not saying trying to start a war, but what are they doing in return? 
In, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, there's a season for everything. Well, this is our time for war, out of worship, which is preaching and singing. It's the only way we can have our war is by doing this. So this year has also been a year where we've seen a lot of earthquakes, a lot of hurricanes, a lot of mountains being moved, reminding us that, hey, I'm still here. You know, because in Luke 21, verse 11, there will be great earthquakes and in various places, famines and pestilence, and there will be terrors and great signs from the heavens. But we see people have more and more explanations for all of this that's happened in the world other than God. Every explanation has to do with science, has to do with this and that. And science wouldn't be here if God would have never created man. So first of all, your scientific, logical type of religion is only here because of God. So congratulations. You now became a follower of God, Scientology, because you're following what man created and man was created by God. But what you don't realize is you're following this. But anyways... We see this year people trying to say that we can control the weather, that we can make man immortal. We have doctors playing God. We have also seen a nation of Poland in 2020, not too long ago, pretty much banned abortion all in all. They just a couple days ago banned it only unless a woman was raped the mother's life was in jeopardy or the baby's life was in jeopardy because the baby would have came out dead anyway. There's the only three reasons that they will give someone an abortion. They will not give you an abortion just because you want one in Poland now. They passed a law that it is illegal unless a doctor tells you there's a reason why you have to have one. So, where am I going with that? No more innocent lives being killed. No more innocent lives in one country at least. One country. It's a start. No more innocent lives. You can praise God for that. That one country out of all of them, what, 240 some odd countries, finally has this. There is an increase in haunting eyes among the people in 2020. There's an increase in lying, innocent blood for years being shed, hearts with wicked schemes, lots of false witnesses, and definitely lots of men stirring the pot again amongst each other. So, and what does the Lord say about that, really? What does he say? He in particular talks of six things that the Lord hates. And it's funny that we live in a year where we are to be six feet apart. So there's six things he hates while we're six feet apart from each other. So it's really easy to not do these things six feet apart. Okay, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haunting eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, abortion, basically, you can put that. A heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up detention amongst his brothers. Whoa, we're seeing that in the streets every day. We're stirring up the tension. We are. A year where our sports has changed. A year where people bow to man, not Jesus. When clearly the Bible says in Psalms 95 verse 6, Come, let us bow down and worship. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. And we are bound to other things, not God. Definitely not God. We're not bound to him. We're bound to the national anthem. We're not bound for solidarity. You're bowing for man's wishes. God wants us to be together, to sit amongst brothers, black, white, Asian, Mexican. No matter what you are, he wants us to sit together and eat together as brothers, not kneel down for solidarity when you're not kneeling for the Lord. And if I lose 100,000 followers for it, I'm glad. I'm not going to be a pansy and pet your goats of this world. I'm not going to be a pansy. I wish someone would smack me in the face for what I believe in. I wish someone would threaten my life for what I believe in. Because I'm not going to stop with this bowing and kneeling crap. Someone needs to get mad about it. Because the Lord is. And when he comes back, he ain't going to come back and hug you. He's going to come back and strike vengeance on this planet. And none of you are ready, including me. I ain't ready. I'm going to hell most likely. But I'm not going to stop preaching God to you guys so someone can go to heaven. We're also in 2020 where we want to put our authorities 
out of business. We don't want to listen to them, whether we like them or not. Police officers, politicians. But the Bible tells us too in Romans chapter 13, verse 1, everyone must submit himself to the governing authorities for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Get that through your thick minds. Next time you say you don't like Biden or you don't like Trump, get it through your minds. God does. And shut up. Do that for once. Shut up for once in 2020. Shut your ever-living injustice mouths up. Because there ain't time for it. The Lord wants to see love. None of this that I'm speaking of is love. If it is, then why has anybody been hurt by protest? Why has innocent lives been shed during protest? Yes, innocent life was killed that started protest. Even if he did something wrong and was being arrested, it was not the right of a police officer to kill a man. This is God's job to kill a man. It was the right for him to go to jail and be put in jail and tried through the trials and tribulations that our court system gives. But then we turn around and do these protesting and all we're doing is shedding more innocent blood. We see more self-centered people in 2020, which makes it seem like we are in the end of days. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1-5 through 5. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of selves, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unpeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, tre uh, treacherous, um, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but deny, uh, denying its power. Avoid such people. I've done that. I pretty much avoided the whole world because every one of you were like it. <laughs> but to the point, the only ones I'm not avoiding are the homeless. But I'm avoiding everyone else other than my family. I'm evading every one of you in this world, but the homeless. Because every one of you fit into this, including me. So why should I be around you? It tells us it will be hard. 2020, how many of... These things that I just said, we've seen on our news. Seriously, all of them. All of them. That I just said in that Timothy verse. Not one of them have you not seen on the news. And prove me wrong. It would take you over a year, and this year ain't even over, to review every single news document that's been given this year. Every one of them going to show you that I'm right. But you know what? 2020, the depression has rise, the suicides, the addictions, the falling out of churches, the ungratefulness, especially the ungratefulness. So many ungrateful people. Disgusting. I wish I could say this like I said to all of your faces. I wish I had a multitude, like it talks in the Bible, Jesus had a multitude of four to 5,000. I wish I had a million people standing in front of me right now and I could say all this to you. I would be yelling it even more than I am. Really wish I could. You feel the pain of our Lord, what he has. Do you feel it? No, you don't. Instead, you're focused on your selfish feelings of killing your joy and soul. Think about him for once. You arrogant, dislikable people of this planet we call Earth. Next time you wake up, why don't you remember these three chapters? These three verses that I'm going to give you. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of God. Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not per perish but have eternal life. But this year has also been the worst for this, the spirit of the Jezebel, which I've talked about before. She has been in these unthinkable pornos, we might as well call them, of music videos of 2020. Because all these 
2020 music videos women have been releasing, even if they haven't been known as a provocative woman, have been pornos. They pretty much have been. They aren't music videos anymore. Most of the music nowadays ain't even music anymore. It's just a bunch of gibberish thrown together with a really bad beat. There's no lyrical content behind it to actually call yourself a lyricless. But you know what? And so be it. I'm old school. I don't listen to gibberish. I listen to truth. But anyways, all these female singers have been using their bodies this year, like I was saying. In Revelations chapter 2, verse 20, But I have this against you, that you tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophetess and is teaching and seducing my servants to practice sexual immortality and to eat sacrificed idols. Eat food sacrificed idols, I mean. Basically like Cardi B. Not long after she makes this music video and some of the dance moves she does, Netflix comes out with a show called Cuties. And they do a lot of these moves in it. I never watched it, but sadly enough, I watched the news, and the news had to show enough clips of it that I was disgusted enough and wished my eyes could unsee it. But I can't because the news wanted to show us little tidbits of this thing that these girls were doing. And these parents, trust me, guys, will be punished. Don't be mad at these parents because in Mark chapter 9, verse 42, And if anyone causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to be thrown into a sea with a large millstone tied around his neck. First of all, you would die before you drown because the millstone would snap your neck as soon as it threw into the water. It would snap your neck. But we have, we have spent this year as a waste, guys, as I wrap this up. The day is near. We have no idea when, though. Why you think no one wants to hear this? Did anyone want to listen to Jesus in those days? Did he say, you follow me? You follow, and when you follow me, you follow me into the vials of suffering? In Matthew chapter 10, verse 38, And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. He tells us to take up the cross. Which means we will have suffering that comes with it. He is here. The signs are here. The Bible doesn't mention us, America. It would not be right if the Bible told us who Babylon would be. Because ultimately that country would grow up not trying to be what the prophecy fulfills. But ultimately, you need to take a moment, even me as a proud American, and I'll still stay the proud American, but realize... We are Babylon. We are. Let me give you a Bible verse out of Revelations, a couple verses to back that up. Revelations 18, verses 2 through 3. With a mighty voice he shouted, Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a home for demons and a haunt for every evil spirit, a haunt for every unclean and detestable bird. For all the nations have drunk the maddening wine of her adulterers. And the kings of the earth committed adultery with her, and the merchants of the earth grew rich from her excessive luxuries. How has this world not grown from us as America? Every country has things from America in it. China too, yes. But even a lot of these Chinese companies, how did China become about with their big, um, you know, like Nike companies and all that, the, their generic Nike companies? Off the luxuries and richness of America. Every one of these nations have became rich from us. And as we're falling this year, every nation's laughing at us. But at the same point, they're hurting luxury-wise a little bit because we're hurting. How have we not become a home for the demons either? By being the first country to legalize abortion in 1970. Or to legalize trans and gay and lesbian marriage. One of the only countries to also do that. There's a few, but... Or celebrating uh, the fact that we don't have one single religion in this country. That we're a cauldron of mixed religions, including atheism and Satanism. These are practice... There's a Gallup poll that there's actually probably in 2020. They have said that from 2006, we have went from 40%... Of Americans read the Bible to 9% before COVID-19. And then after COVID-19, they did the poll again in June, we jumped to 13%. Still relatively low. But atheists 
people that read atheist books, they were in the high 20s. They were more people in America read things to do with atheism than to do with God. So how are we not a home for the demons? We don't have a set religion, like I said. We're, one of the, we're the only nation. But God tells us he's trying to save us in 2020. In verse 4 of that Revelations 18, in verse 4 says, Then I heard another voice from heaven say, Come out of her, my people, so that you will not share her sins, so that you will not receive any of her plagues. This year, the people have wasted that. The Lord's telling us come out of Babylon. And we can't literally leave our country like they did back in the old days in Bible because they could just you know, wander over to another country. We can't leave it. But what he's meaning by coming out is to realize, be a born-again Christian, wake up, come out, be here, repent, and be ready to go when he comes. The signs and wonders are from space, too. We have signs and wonders from space. In Acts chapter 2, verse 19, the verse before saying young men will have visions, but it says in verse 19, this is the verse literally right before the young men will have visions, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. Every day we got news about space. I follow space very big. I don't know if a lot of you do, but I actually have a... Um, Hold this up real quick. A NASA shirt. I follow space. I'm a big space buff. Every day we've had news about space. The most I've ever watched. And I have been following space legitimately since the age of 6 to 36. I've been following this many years. I've never seen this many breaking newses about space. Not only are we having that. We have blood. There's blood being shed all across the world over protest. We have fires, and we have billows of smoke on this earth right now. And young men are prophesizing. So you know what 2020 needs before I close. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 14. Let all that you have, or let all that you do be done in love. 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. Colossians chapter 3, verse 14. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And quit hating and be forgiven. In Proverbs 10, verse 12, hate stirs up strife, but love covers all offenses. Basically, I'm telling you love. Now let us pray. For it closes. Let us pray, Lord. This year has been rough on not just me, but the whole world. Lord, help us to find you in this demonic world we live in. And forgive me of my sins. I am a sinner. You know my name, but I want to let you know it again. I, Hank, am sorry for my actions. I pray for all my brothers and sisters of every country and every color that we all can walk in unity and love and not strife. Jesus, it is hard to be like you. But I ask that you help us all find our way to you, Lord, so that we can be part of the book of life and not of the destruction of sin. In your almighty name, Jesus. Amen. Now, guys, there's a lot that could have been said, but this year, in a nutshell, has been hell on the mentality, the lives of people. If you haven't found your way back to the Lord, do it. There's many things like I'm drawn to Romans. It's a little harder for people that are newer to faith to come to Romans. But read the four Gospels. Because the four Gospels will show you not only the divine power of our Lord and Savior. It will also show you him as a servant, as a human. And it will show you with human reactions. And it will show you the miracles he does. And... Please subscribe and like and follow these as I slowly each month give a breakdown of every book of the Bible. I did Genesis this month. In November, I'm going to have Exodus and so on and so on to try to give a breakdown of every book of the Bible to understand things a little bit more, to understand that it doesn't matter that you were a messed up individual. Like I'm in Exodus now. He picked Moses, which was a murderer, 
to give us our Ten Commandments. He picked Paul that opened all these churches and wrote most of the New Testament, who was a murderer of Christians. And um, he was an unbeliever. He picks the messed up individuals, guys. So I love you all and stay faithful with the Lord. YOLO, you only live once, but you only live once for the Lord. God bless.